I don't think it would come as any great shock to the vast majority of my audience that we are standing at the precipice of an incredibly wicked time in history. Some might say it's the most wicked that has ever been. Looking at the events of the last three years, some might say, I don't know how we can get any worse. Well, folks, I found a piece of information. I found a little blurb that by itself wouldn't probably grab anyone's attention. But when you put it together with other pieces of information, it paints a picture. It paints a picture that when seen, it can't be unseen. Something very wicked this way comes. Now, real quick, we're going to do a series on this over at the Patreon channel. We just put up a brand new video talking about a completely different subject over there a day or two ago. And believe me, that content alone would probably make you shake your head and wonder what the heck's going on. But if you'd like to join us over there, only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. There is a $5 level over there, not required, handful of videos. Those are another level though. Those are only for those folks out there who are ready for the truth in a way that doesn't pull any punches. We can take the gloves off because we partner with Vimeo over there and tell the truth, unlike here where we have to censor things. But we are going to push the limits today. We are going to see just how far we can go before the YouTube censors say, okay, he can't tell that truth. That's going to bother too many people. Somebody might figure it out. You see, a lot of folks last 10, 15, 20 years have been planning for Armageddon, the end of the world, when everything falls apart. Some have decided, I'm going to be a loner. I'm going to go it alone. I'm going to just have me and my Bible and God, and I'm going to uh, move from place to place to not make myself a target and just wait out the end and hope I can you know, make it to my eternal glory. Some have said, well, I'm going to be by myself, but I'm going to dig myself my own personal crypt and I'm going to furnish it with a stove and some candles and a little bed and a blanket and a pillow. And that's pretty much what this is. Hugely popular videos on YouTube. Guys digging themselves basically their own graves. Some have said, well, when the end comes, I've got a few close friends. And we're going to try to keep each other in check. We're not going to get in a big group. It's just going to be us few guys. And, you know, we're going to make sure that we get our preps right and we keep our mind right and we're going to be there to lift each other up. Not a bad plan. Not a bad plan for some, though. For some, it's going to be a bigger group. They're going to need a larger amount of folks to stay on the straight and narrow. But sometimes, as we know, that can actually lead you astray. Now, what's the piece of information? Three minutes in. What's the piece of information? There's a little country down in Central America called El Salvador. I'm sure a lot of the Bitcoin fans in my audience are very well aware of what's happened in that country in the last few years. They decided to completely ditch their own currency and go completely crypto. Go full, uh, jump the shark, crypto, Bitcoin, all in. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that, but down there, apparently, you can go to an El Salvador grocery store and use Bitcoin to buy groceries. And when I first came out against cryptocurrency, I said, look, when that day comes, when I can go take cryptocurrency and I can go down to Publix and I can fill up a grocery cart, I can go tap a little scanner or whatever, and they take it as it is without converting it into dollars first, you know, then you've got me hooked. Well, something's happened. You see, and it speaks to something that's actually biblical and prophetic. And there's a hint in the flag of El Salvador. Now, some might look at this and see the colors and go, ooh, wait a minute. I recognize those colors from another flag. Nope. It's not that. It's not that. It has to do with this little logo in the middle, uh, surrounded by the words Republica del Salvador and La America Central. Here's that logo blown up. 15 September, 1821, it shows five green mountains over a sea, and then it shows a, a stick with this red cap on top of it. Now, I want you to remember that, this red cap on top of the stick. A lot of countries down in 
Central and South America have this imagery in their flags, different, uh, um, if not the country, the states within the countries do. It's called a Phrygian cap, and I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A-N cap. Phrygian cap. First donned and historically known by the Iranians, the Persians, and the Medes. Now, those of you who know about uh, the beast, seven heads, ten horns, know about the ancient prophecy of the great empires. But it gets better than this. You got to go farther down the rabbit hole. The West, this is the new president of El Salvador, a guy named Nayib Bukele. Hope I pronounced that right. The West could collapse. Latin American leader, the U.S. dollar, is quote-unquote backed by nothing, and its fall will drag down the rest of the world. El Salvador's Nayib Bukele has declared the guy who has decided to shift his entire country to cryptocurrency is complaining about the U.S. dollar being backed by nothing. It's pretty unbelievable, but it gets better. The U.S. economy is based on the farce of printing unlimited amounts of money, and Western civilization will collapse when the bubble inevitably bursts. Salvadoran President Nayib Bukele warned American conservatives on Thursday, fresh from winning a second term in office with 84% of the vote, Bukele arrived at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Maryland to a hero's welcome, hailed by American right-wingers, Trump supporters, for his adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender and his iron-fisted crackdown on gang crime. Bukele closed his speech with a call for massive structural changes to the U.S. economy. Now, Ready for the mark of the beast? Conservatives said, he always, conservatives, he said, pardon me, always tell me that the problem is high taxes, but they are wrong. Quote, the real problem is that you pay high taxes only to uphold the illusion that you are funding the government, which you are not, he claimed, before describing how the government is financed by treasury bonds, which are purchased by the Federal Reserve with printed money backed by the bonds themselves. The government is funded by, by money printing, paper backed by paper, a bubble that will inevitably burst. And he's talking about the fall of Western civilization when the dollar collapses. Now, a lot of you are like, yes, we've heard this. What's the new piece of information? Well, you remember that red hat? That red hat stands for liberty. It stands for freedom. And there's something that has always gone hand in hand with ultimate liberty, ultimate freedom, without any type of constraints whatsoever. Who remembers, almost two years ago, when I began talking about cryptocurrency and I compared it to events in the series Black Sales. Those of you who haven't watched this, real quick, it's a story of uh, 16th, 15th, 16th, 17th century Caribbean, New World Caribbean, the pirates coming here. There's, there's a lawless, pay attention, lawless area. And there's a lot of shipping coming from the New World going back to Europe, and there's raids, and these pirates, you know, score, and they um, seize tons and tons of gold, and they become very, very wealthy, very powerful. Now, it's kind of an up and down business, but pretty much all the guys in my audience will know what this meme is about, and I'm sure there's some chuckling going on, but stick with me. The Bitcoin guys, the crypto guys always say, well, when crypto goes down, just that's when you buy, 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 buy some more. That's when you buy the dip, so to speak. And of course, what we're seeing is a young lady sitting on a couch. And I'll let you, those who don't know what the meme is, use your imagination about where that money might come from. Now, like I said before, I don't care about the hype around it. If I can't buy groceries or gas with it, then it's not money. Well, in El Salvador, they fixed that problem, didn't they? But the, there's another problem. The average Bitcoin transaction necessitates about 900 kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to power an average U.S. home for a month. Output, 462.73 kilograms of carbon dioxide. That's as, And, of course, the joke is that's nearly as eco-hostile as a non-vegan diet. And conservatives are like, I still don't see the problem. I still don't see the problem. Well... You see, back in the 1700s, they declared this group of pirates that had gone rogue and were pretty much operating with impunity, 
Hostis humani generis, the laws of every civilized nation, declared them enemies of all mankind. In response, they had a doctrine of their own. They declared war against the world. Some of you might remember when I was uh, streaming on Twitch and we played, a, there's a game out there, Assassin's Creed, um, not Odyssey, but this is another version of it. Um, Odyssey was, of course, the Greek world. And the name escapes me right now, um, Black Flag. Assassin's Creed Black Flag was the name of this one that we played. Now, El Salvador has another little secret, a dirty little secret. They constructed these mega prisons, and I mean bigger than anything you've ever seen. 40,000 inmate mega prisons. And they rounded up, I think it's up to actually 75,000. 75,000 gang members. It's a country of about 6 million people. So if you do the math, they rounded up a little over 1% of their population. And this is what they did to them. And, and this isn't photoshopped. This is exactly what they did. Stripped them, put them in masks and boxers, and that's it. And they put them in these giant concrete state-of-the-art prisons and threw away the key dropped the murder rate dropped the murder rate in el salvador from 38 per hundred thousand down to like 2.9 by taking this giant group of modern day pirates modern day pirates and locking them up and throwing away the key now of course to run a giant prison like this, you need boatloads of electricity. And you need people to work, and you need... Where's all that coming from? Where is all of that coming from? And some might ask, this, this, looks, like, this looks like hell. This looks like hell on earth. To be seized and stripped down to have a mask forced upon you, and with you and tens of thousands of others and then just forgotten about. But what about this story? You see, this is another form of uh, trade that goes on. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction. The first thing that's going to happen, first thing that's going to happen when things start to fall apart with the dollar and the economy is this is going to get legalized immediately so it can be taxed. It's going to be legal. And this was basically the reason I bring it up. It was the basis of the entire story of black sales. It was the basis of the entire story. All four seasons revolved around laundering money through a brothel. Now, remember that red cap? That Phrygian cap? There's another leader that has donned this, this Phrygian cap. And there is actually a list um, started in the Iranian world. But it goes so far back throughout history. It's, it was even used in um, early, early 20th century um, World War I patriotic posters. Columbia, before there was Uncle Sam, there was Columbia. C-O-L-U-M-B-I-A, personification. American flag gown, Phrygian cap, which signifies freedom and the pursuit of liberty. You see, this is what ties it all together for me. It's what ties everything all together for me. The lawless one. Second Thessalonians. The boaster, speaking of his own greatness. Daniel 7. The arrogant one. Revelation 13. Pathological liar. 2 John and Daniel, builder of towers in Genesis, tree breaker Daniel, does he demand worship? 2 Thessalonians again, deceitful, attempting to lure the church into following him, man of sin, chosen one, no empathy, Daniel, Thessalonians, Revelation. When you look it all up, when you look it all up, it's there. All the pieces come together. It's going to be for the lack of money, for the lack of wealth. 
that people are going to fall away in massive numbers, far greater numbers than we're seeing now, very soon. And when they do, what's, what's the answer always going to be? More, more liberty, more liberty and more capitalism. Well, ask yourself, I, I want, especially the Bitcoin folks out there, I, I would like to ask you, you guys a question about this. Because a lot of folks have said that Bitcoin is the key to our freedom, key to our future. Would you live under a leader that did to people and put them in prisons in the way that, that he's done it? Some said, well, look what look at how safe it is. Look at how, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. When you live under total and complete tyranny, it is very safe. Tyranny is incredibly safe. The uh, Caribbean in, this, in the 18th century was not <laughs> a safe place at all, but it was probably the freest place on earth. And I brought up the one image, even in London, even in London at that time, one in five women were trading in prostitution on a day-to-day -day basis. So we, we pretty much, you know, tried to wash our hands of it in this country, but we have a massive, massive, huge prostitution problem in this country that is hidden by the internet. There are more than... If it was truly known how um, rampant it was, it would be the number one story on every news organization that you saw. But because it's hidden under the guise of Fansly and Patreon and OnlyFans and all this, people don't know. And it's all about the money. It's all about the money and all about liberty. You see, I don't think this is going to be our future anytime soon folks so uh, disgusted that they're going to go live in the wilderness. I think that word wilderness in the Bible is going to be something very, very different very soon. What do you guys think? And what's your choice, by the way? Are you going to be the person that's in the group of a dozen, two dozen? Are you going to be the, 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 maybe the, this is two to three or a three to five group? Are you going to be the solo the solo that, that buries themselves and tries to completely lose all contact with everyone? Or are you going to be the solo that wanders, going from place to place? I'm kind of curious. Maybe I should do a poll over at the uh, Communities tab. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. So would love to have you guys over there at Patreon, where we're going to talk about this in detail. But as of right now, God bless all of you. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.